In recent years, literally hundreds of startups have popped up saying that they're going to change air travel by building and operating new electric aircraft that take off and land vertically. Silicon Valley-based Archer Aviation now seems to be one of several front runners in what seems like a space race, and it could be one of the first companies to start flying passengers in the U.S. Archer has partnered with United Airlines and plans to begin commercial air taxi operations in select U.S. cities in 2025. So it's a super exciting time at Archer today. We are just finishing up the design of our Pilot Pulse 4 passenger midnight aircraft. So that's the vehicle that we're targeting entry into service in 2025, serving these early routes, moving people you know, between uh, city centers and airports, those sorts of things. Over the last few years, we've been focused on uh, developing a technology demonstrator vehicle. It's called Maker, so we've got that um, through all of its flight test campaign. Uh, we've learned a lot from, from that work, flowed a lot of that into the development of Midnight, and now it's really um, kind of the hard work with FAA, getting through the certification process, you know, a couple of years here before entering the service. So Maker is um, it's about a 40-foot wingspan, 3,600 pound gross weight vehicle, so pretty close to full scale. So if you compare that to Midnight, it's about 6,500 pound max gross, 50 foot wingspan, uh, so similar scale. And really the whole idea of Maker was we wanted to learn about the system architectures that we developed for a lot of the key systems on board, as well as the flight control software. So that's kind of a big piece of the technology that we, we do in-house. There are a couple um, differences between Maker and Midnight to, to be note uh, to be noted. So one is that the motors and batteries for that aircraft or for Midnight are all developed in-house. So for Maker, we used uh, partners to develop those components. Uh, and so for Midnight, it's all our own in-house developed technology. The reason why we're investing in motors and batteries is because those are the really key uh, technologies that lead to differences in performance. So if you take a step back at Archer, our whole strategy is to take the safest, most efficient path to commercialize our vehicle. And so when we looked at kind of the technology landscape, uh, there's lots of great companies, and great technology out there to leverage in you know, various parts of the aircraft, right? The flight deck, uh, you know, we're partnered with the Garmin, it's been fantastic. Uh, some of our actuation systems are partnered with Honeywell, right? Great technology, great experience there, lots of certification, uh, heritage and know-how. Uh, but when, when we looked at the motors and batteries, there's some groups starting to work on it, um, but nothing that's quite uh, optimized for what we need, right? And if you, if you think about even a further step back, right, the reason these aircraft are so compelling is because we're able to really tightly integrate the powertrain, the propulsion systems, with the overall vehicle design. And so what that means is we've got this interesting and unique need to really optimize both the batteries and the motors for the aircraft to get all of the benefits from going electric. So for all those reasons, we chose to really invest in that technology. We've got a really big team today that's just focused on uh, motors and batteries. We've pulled a lot of folks from the automotive industry, you know, ex-Tesla folks, uh, Rivian folks, uh, uh, Lucid folks. And it's been really fascinating and, and valuable to have that sort of automotive perspective with uh, kind of aerospace applications. We're um, in final assembly of the first midnight aircraft uh, today. So that will enter flight testing around the middle of this year. And then next up for us is building the conforming test articles uh, of midnight. So um, we're on track to build those uh, this year and get into piloted flight testing in early 2024 in support of our entry to service uh, target dates. Archer has already announced two air taxi routes in New York City and Chicago. Other early adopters of so-called urban air mobility include Los Angeles and Miami. We think the first applications and first commercial uses of our aircraft will be for these uh, routes where there's lots of demand, uh, say moving people to and from an international airport or you know international airport to city center. So we announced last year with our uh, customer and partner United um, that we intend to operate a service from the downtown Manhattan uh, heliport, which uh, is an existing piece of uh, infrastructure, to the Newark uh, airport. So the idea there is to provide uh, United another option for their customers, right, to get uh, efficiently, you know, safely from Manhattan into Newark to catch their flight on United. Over time, we think the networks will expand and not just uh, be these kind of main trunk routes, but those sorts of networks will start small and evolve. As Archer works to expand its network of air taxi routes, the company also has ambitious plans to ramp up production. Initially, Archer plans to produce about 650 midnight aircraft per year. Eventually, the company hopes to manufacture as many as 2,300 midnight aircraft per year. 
That's more than any current aircraft manufacturer produces annually, which makes some observers skeptical of the Envisage scaling up. But Archer has the advantage of having a major car making giant as its investor and partner. Well, we're super excited to be uh, just starting construction on our high rate manufacturing facility um, out here just outside of Atlanta, Georgia, a town called Covington. Um, Stellantis, uh, which is the third largest auto OEM in the world, is a big partner of ours on that project. So we recently announced that we're going to be working together to produce these midnight aircraft at this new factory. And they've just been invaluable in helping us um, think through planning and stand up of that facility. And then we've got a big team uh, from Stellantis embedded uh, with Archer, helping us execute on those plans and really work towards uh, ramping up manufacturing. Nobody manufactures aircraft in uh, more than uh, you know, a few hundred a year type quantities. So to really make these aircraft accessible for people's everyday lives, we're gonna need to figure out how to manufacture at much higher scales. So you know, we'll take it one step at a time, but we're really excited to be um, out here in Georgia and uh, working to turn all this into reality.